Hey guys, it's uh, me, Jay, and I'm on vacation. Yeah, I am uh, up in God's country, northern Wisconsin. My family owns a cabin, that, uh, and we're here for our annual week. And I figured this would be a great spot to do a, a knife review, right? And what are we going to look at today? Well, I'm going to show you this little guy. Yeah, this is the Boker Plus brad zinker designed fr and we're going to look at that one so but first i just want to apologize because there's going to be you know some background noise i don't have my lighting uh which is why i also part of the reason i'm outside but you're going to hear boats going by out in the distance um because i mean we are right on the water which i will show you in just one second but um yeah, so you're gonna hear some noise, you know, as if you would think that these other boats would know, you know, I'm shooting a YouTube video here. I can't. <laughs> but anyway, I wanna swing you around and um, show you what I'm looking at right now. Okay, so you see that? Now there is the cabin coming into view. Uh, if you look a little farther, there is the fire pit, the boathouse. Um, you can guys can see the water way down there I'm gonna bring it around and this is the cabin and again I'm gonna keep going because I want to show you guys the rest of the water and there is my camera stand but you can see there through the trees the water uh, you should probably see oh yeah there's our swimming suits hanging up on the line I'm sure my wife is happy that I just showed everybody that but, uh, you know, and maybe I'll take you guys along with, because uh, we're, we're going to go and do some fishing tomorrow out in the pontoon boat. And maybe I'll take you guys with. But for right now, I'm going to reset the camera. I'm going to set it so we're looking at the, uh, you know, the top down, the top down tabletop view. And um, let's get to the review. Hey, I'm Jay, and if you're looking to buy a knife and you need to see what it's like first before you drop your hard-earned money on it, here's what you got to do. Click on subscribe so I can help you, and remember to click that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so all of the specs that you are currently looking at right now, I had personally messaged myself. So those of you interested, good spot to pause and read. So this is the Boker Plus Brad Zinker FR. And of course, so we'll go over what I like about this knife, some of the potential deal breakers that I see. But first, why don't we go ahead and take care of them uh, size comparisons. First, I'll bring out the the new, well, relatively new, uh, Kershaw Atmos, which Sinkovich designed. And how about uh, Benchmade? Of course, the automatic Casbah. And I didn't bring too many knives with me, guys, so I'm kind of limited as far as size comparisons go. But this, of course, is the Spyderco Manix 2 Backlock. Starting out uh, with what I like about this Boker Plus FR, we're going to talk about, of course, the blade, which happens to be a really, really nice looking 2.8 inches of, and that's going to be VG10 blade steel that is it's flat ground in a just a just a very you know classic traditional uh kind of drop point with blade thickness of two and a half millimeters and a blade width just a little bit under an inch at 0.92 and take a look at that blade spine yep that is nice and rounded i mean i know it stinks any of you that would plan on I don't know, using this to strike fire steel, not the best knife for that because not a 90 degree angle. Now, the, the blade is riding 
on ball bearing pivot and you can see the deployment is going to be only with that flipper tab and push button deployment is going to be the way to go here because the light switch just does not work well there i got it there hold on okay maybe i'm lying so light switch works okay but push button works a heck of a lot better and you can tell just by looking at the jimping here you see that there on the uh where it's located on the flipper so that really it's there for a reason it, and it kind of suggests the recommended method of de deployment which oh by the way is this is going to be just one of two areas of jimping on the entire knife the other area see if you guys can see that there yeah right on that shiny part on the uh, lock bar of the frame now something i did notice and this is uh, especially for you lefties the the boker plus fr the lock bar does tolerate pressure during deployment so you see i'm pushing down on the lock bar let's do that again i'm pushing down on the lock bar and you still can deploy the uh the blade now looking at the handle i want you to keep in mind guys that this is the type of knife this is a, a, a like a minimalist design so less is more kind of philosophy here and the handle is still fairly comfortable with absolutely no sharp edges anywhere and i can almost fit all four of my fingers and i wear a medium-sized glove on this three and a half inch handle but to be honest for most of you this is just gonna be a three finger kind of grip handle so if that's going to be a problem for you you might want to look elsewhere because i mean it's three and a half inch long handle so it's not going to be very big now i want to bring this a little bit closer and check out those accents on the on the holes in the handle now it looks like that the titanium was polished the rings were kind of polished here uh, to like a mirror finish which i think looks really really sharp now disassembly of the boker plus fr is incredibly easy there is just going to be the one body screw and on top of that you do not have to remove the pocket clip to completely disassemble this so i always love that feature in a knife now as long as we're talking about that pocket clip it's going to be just tip up only so it is going to be just one position tip up only and that's going to be yep for righties now it is a really nice deep carry clip that it is mounted if you can see yeah the screw holes the screws are not sticking up at all because it's mounted flush to the scale so again nice little uh, attention to detail now you will literally not notice this knife in your pocket because its closed width is only at 0.98 inches so just under an inch and that handle thickness is only going to be 0.31 so that is pretty darn small okay i want to go ahead and grab the scale and i want to show you how much this is going to weigh you down okay so before i go ahead and throw this up on the scale i just want to kind of show you the inside yeah there's no milling in there but there doesn't need to be now does there and of course just that one that one um, barrel spacer you can see right there on the corner so let's see how that's gonna affect the weight hopefully you guys can see the readout here and I apologize if you cannot but you're looking at 1.93 ounces Wow that is fantastic 
and I believe that is almost the exact same weight as the Kershaw Atmos. Now, of course, we do have to get in to some of the potential deal breakers because sadly there are there are a few and before we do that I just want to quickly remind you to go ahead and click on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point so deal breaker number one is unfortunately gonna be the action here yeah it is just not that great and it was even worse uh, when it was brand new so right out of the box it has gotten just a little bit better but with the Boker Plus FR you really have to think about where your finger is positioned when you do the deployment and I have found that if I put the 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 pad of my index finger so the center of it, let's say, right on this top kind of corner of the flipper, I've noticed that that I'm able to get the the best action when it's positioned that way. Or there's a little trick that you can try uh, because since this is a frame lock, what you can do is kind of push on the frame lock with your thumb. So if you push down on it, it's gonna allow it's gonna let you build up just some more energy behind that and then you lift your thumb off just a little bit as you're about to deploy it and it should normally swing that right open sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but also I mean you're not able to shake this open so the detent is strong in that respect but as far as deployment goes no and that's kind of unfortunate because there is no other method of deployment here i mean it's gonna be just the flipper you don't you can't use like a thumb stud or anything so the action with that flipper kind of needs to be good with this knife and and it's it's really not next potential deal breaker is going to be well, I, I mean, I know that this is a minimalist kind of design, but there is no lock bar insert and no over travel stop, which means that you can pretty much push the lock bar out as far as you like. I mean, the pocket clip does kind of act as an over travel stop, but still you're still able to push that out if you can see. You can push that out pretty darn far. And there was a little bit of lots, a lock stick when I first, when this was new out of the box, but it has lessened considerably. So consider that, I guess. And the next potential deal breaker is gonna be regarding this oversized sharpening choil because it is just absolutely monstrous. I mean, on, on a knife this small, every centimeter counts here. So the sharpening choil really should not be this big at all. All it's doing is it's just stealing like sharpened edge from you. And that just drives me nuts because it's way too small as a finger choil and it makes a very large sharpening choil. I just wish it was not this large. Now, next potential deal breaker is going to be regarding the steel. Now, there's some boats going by. Sorry, guys. Uh, I do like VG10 blade seal. I like it a lot. And it's, I know it's not very exciting, but it's one of those steels, and I know I've said this before, that is kind of right down the middle as far as like, it's good with corrosion resistance and edge retention. It doesn't do either one exceptionally well, but it, it does both fairly well. Does that make sense? Now, I know there was an actual S35VN version of this on 
master up. So if you were lucky enough to get that, congrats. And now the last potential deal breaker is going to be regarding, yeah, the price. Now, I picked this up on Amazon for about 100 bucks. On Blade HQ, you can find it for $110. That, I feel, is really is a lot for VG10 and for, you know, barely acceptable action. So, to be honest, I do. I absolutely love the look of this knife. I appreciate the the minimalist design. I do I do wish that it was closer in size to the Benchmade bug out because I just think that the bug out at almost three and a quarter inch blade length is is pretty darn good as an everyday carry. So I would have to say for $100 or even $110 on Blade HQ, you can do a lot better than this. If you're just absolutely in love with the size, with the design, with the materials, then yeah, sure, why not? I mean, it is titanium and it is ball bearing pivot and it is engineered very, very small. But at that price point, I just feel that that's a bit much.